Uh, making a video, yeah, a little bit wet out. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, I think I'll go with some of these analogies again. Analogies are a good weapon, I think, in any kind of debate. So you create a a parallel circumstance, a, a duplicate circumstance, you know, made of different elements, and you show a, a ludicrousness, a, a preposterousness in some kind of circumstance, and you just point out, well, how's the circumstance really different? What's the difference between these two things? So, um, I've used the the roller coaster analogy, so we'll play with that one uh, and see where it goes. So you have this obvious circumstance, a fun park, and there's uh, the game of life uh, is basically all or nothing, right? I mean, you can't, you know, you can't conditionally uh, create children. You can't create them to be automatic life lovers, automatically healthy. Um, you know, guaranteed to have the psychology that says, yes, I want to be a capitalist. Yes, I want to, you know, play in this mess. Yes, I don't mind imperfections all over the place. Yes, everybody can be a fat pig and I'll like it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you can't guarantee any of that. So, the game is basically, um, if you're going to play it, it's going to be played with this vulnerability that... Uh, you know, people are going to be created who are not going to be compliant <laughs> to the standards. They're not going to conform to the norm. Ooh, good, good, good rhyme. Conform to the norm. Yeah, they're not going to do that. And uh, so the question is, so, so here's the, the proposition that's equally all or nothing. Uh, okay, there's five of you. Four of you really, really want to go to the fun park and have fun, and one of you is allergic, and you're gonna, they're going to be sick the whole time, horribly sick, sick all over the place, just absolutely miserable. Uh, so, yeah, it's sort of a democracy, and so the four of you say what? You all vote to go. You know that victim's going to be created. You know, realistically... You know, everybody knows realistically, right? They don't think about it, maybe. Maybe no one forces them to think about it. But you know the risks when you have a kid. You know it might be autistic. It might be born retarded. It might be born without arms and legs. These are real risks of your uh, playing the game. And yes, of course, it might be uh, have a psychology. It might be a drunk in the future and jump in front of a train. And you've basically, you know, you have to assign, you have to accept that as one of the risks. And so here's a scenario where, yeah, the risk will be, uh, you're all going to go to the theme park, and it's not just a risk anymore. So we've just, all we've done is shown you that the risk isn't just a risk, it's a known. It's a fact. And so what's the difference, as a practical matter, between... You accepting a <clears throat> one in five or one in ten chance that your child will not be uh, have an easy time of it. They will not be lucky. They'll be unlucky, and uh, things will happen to them. They might get molested, some kind of other bullshit. Who knows? And what are you saying? You're basically saying it's okay if that happens. I accept. Uh, responsibility and I'm saying it's okay to impose so you're a person who if it was a group of five and you know you were going to go to the fun park you would accept tormenting the person who didn't want to go you would accept forcing them to be sick so you could have a you know scream and yelling Go, ooh, I'm happy. Let's eat some crap. <laughs> and take a crap. And call it a good day. Um, I mean, really. I mean, what's wrong with this analogy, this metaphor, this, this um, description of what takes place? How is it inaccurate? It's fundamentally what you're doing. 
And I mean, I personally react to that circumstance. I would react my entire life to that circumstance. I don't think there's any point in my life where I wouldn't have reacted to that circumstance by saying, let's not bother. He's going to be sick. <laughs> yeah, because I had uh, a risk aversion uh, by nature. My nature. I, I mean, I can't... It just seemed having a, a little bit of a taste of um, what it was to be sick, be uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it just... No, you don't do that. You don't have that unnecessarily. You really need an important mission. Something important has to be happening for you to impose suffering on somebody. Now, you can't do it because you want something. Not, you know, not because you need it, but because you want it. And, and uh, yeah, there's just no way I can make sense out of that. You can. You can make sense out of forcing somebody to be sick, to be miserable, to have a very bad time, so you can have a good time. You can do that math in your head and come up with that answer. <sighs> well, obviously you can, because you're likely to be one of the defenders of people doing exactly that. That's exactly what the uh, common perception of risk assessment is. And it happens in all of these different areas. Again, people accept risk when they're not exposed to it often. <laughs> they accept the dangers of workplaces, the uh, you know, other kinds of um, trespasses that are possible. The violations a company might perpetrate. Well, as long as I don't live on the water, it's okay for them to pollute the water. You know, as long as it's not my backyard, right? Uh, as long as it's not my family or my people at risk. And uh, the presumption is, again, in supporting uh, procreation, that uh, we'll all pretend there's no risk. We'll all pretend it's going to work out just fine. We won't accept hard, real statistics in the real world. No, we'll just talk nonsense. Uh, I mean, people who support the right of people to have kids, they're supporting, you know, two in a hundred go to college. <laughs> they're supporting the world being littered with deprivated human beings just littered with them, the vast majority, in hard deprivation. And you're just saying, fine, I accept that, because my life's so, char so charming, and my rights are so sacred, that there's no way I would force myself to take some kind of competency test. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to support that idea, uh, because I certainly wouldn't want to have to take a competency test and defend what I do. Uh, I mean, it's just so obviously uh, unrealistic and irrational. It's irrational to defend what is indefensible logically. And, and the indefensibility of it can be illustrated so easily with just this simple sketch of what's actually taking place. Four people are simply saying to the fifth, fuck you, I don't care. I want, and my want is greater than your welfare, uh, period. And that's all you're doing. And instead of accepting that as the truth, you run from it, you pretend reality is something else. Hands are falling down for no good reason, <laughs> except that I guess I didn't tie them properly. Uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah. So yeah. So it's a, a, a suitable analogy. Um, it's the parallel analogy would be, um, you know, the any anything that's a group uh, imposition. So you could have a restaurant, and uh, you know if the restaurant, you know, kills 
<laughs> one in ten patrons, or even let's say one in a hundred, one in a thousand. I mean, the number doesn't have to be very high, right? And certainly, if it makes one in ten sick, very sick, um, you're going to close it down. You're going to say, "Hey, you can't, you can't do that. That's that's not good enough. That's not even close to good enough." And yet, these are the realistic outcomes here on planet Earth. Uh, you know, one in a thousand will uh, find their life insufferable, um, horrible, awful, and and a lot more than that will find it uh, difficult, a struggle, nasty, uh, not something they do over again for sure. That number gets higher and higher. Um, you will allow this to keep happening. You don't come to the rescue. You don't do anything to protect these people because you have converted them somehow into nothing, into some kind of enemy that's that's poo-pooing on your your fun, <laughs> you know. Because yes, you seem to think you're immune. The restaurant can't hurt you because you like it. <laughs> okay, you have whatever a cast iron stomach, and it can't make you sick. Uh, you know, you'll eat up all of this crap. You love to watch animals eating each other and the blood gushing out and the screams and the horror. You know, so it's all fine for you. It's all perfectly consumable. And so you're just going to say, eh, regulation, smegulation, uh, you know, who cares? And for no other reason, right? No rational reason, except you suck. <laughs> yeah, there's no other way to put it. No other statement to be made. Uh, you're just not in my backyarding. You're just saying, I got mine. Fuck everybody else. And who's supposed to say anything to that but, God, you suck. There's no other response. <laughs> you know, there's no other reality. Uh, you're just a, a taker, plainly. You might as well own slaves. You might as well beat your wife. Uh, because uh, clearly it's all about you. And it doesn't really include any other uh, acceptance of any responsibility for what your ability to you is made out of. Uh, you know, it's like the inheritance rich, <laughs> you know, lording about with the law protecting their money, protecting their entitlement. They didn't earn any of it. They just tell, yeah, well, the law says so. So it's all okay. That's the law. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't have to mean anything, right? It just, that's the, doesn't have to be any integrity. They don't have to earn it. They can just take it. And they'll be happy to do so. And they'll be very happy to just point their finger at everybody else and say, pull up your bootstraps, work harder. Be more productive. Make yourself important. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have to, but you can. I mean, these are obvious, grotesque uh, hypocrisies. And, uh, you know, they're just easily revealed um, by just analogizing to um, simpler diagrams that include all the key features and just basically show, reveal the truth, which is your wants are more important than other people's needs. It's not any more complicated than that. You're just takers. Uh, you're insensitive, cruel, uh, obnoxious, <laughs> um, arrogant, uh, unqualified, uh, unreasonable in your behavior. Um, you can't defend yourself against the analogy and you can't explain how the analogy doesn't completely and fully and entirely uh, describe the essence of this reality. You're assigning risk to somebody else and uh, you're um, taking what you want 
at their jeopardy. Nothing else. There's no, no other facts that are necessary. It's, just, it's the plain, flat, ugly truth. Uh, so argue it. Explain how the analogy doesn't fit. Uh, how there isn't um, a completely um, accessible knowledge um, of the practical risk, the fact that you are not going to be immune to the creation of the Frankenstein monster, the worst case scenario. You're not immune to it. You have every possibility of rolling the snake eyes uh, of disaster and you're just saying, it's not going to happen to me. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 he's, the, he's the sucker. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm creating my own sucker, my own uh, um, uh, slave, essentially. And I'm hoping he's going to be, you know, lucky charms. He's going to be, everything's going to work out just fine. But hope is not reasonable. Uh, wishing is not reasonable. These are not cures for reality. Hope and wish. This does not cure a, re a problem of reality. So that's nonsense. Uh, completely illegitimate. And such. So, I don't know if I need to add on. I do have to take the extra walk. I could deal with some comments, but I don't know if I want to add that in this video. Do a separate video for that. Tranquil the slandering petty liar. <laughs> you have to carry him again. Uh, once and for all, so to speak. Um, so anyway, uh, what was it? Oh. Oh, filter. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. Later for that. Um, anyway, off to work I go. I hope, I hope. Um, all right, so <clears throat> let's see if there's any other. I mean, you can do all kinds of, um, you know, subtle changes to the thought experiment. So you can add, uh, you know, just create some other um, um, diagram that just includes this basic like the gambling one. This is a perfect, the same, same difference. So let's just say instead of dice, instead of rolling dice, you rolled uh, dice with little images on them. And most of the images are little smiley face kind of things. So you can get double smiley faces or laughing face and smiley face. You know, you can get all kinds of combinations. But it, there's a skull and crossbone on one face of the dice. And if that shows up, ooh, bad, very bad. And so you're basically just saying for somebody else, you're sitting there with, with two people, and you're saying, first you're saying, I'm gonna roll dice for you, whether you like it or not, okay? And I'm gonna control what you get. And uh, I'm not gonna get consent from you because that's, uh, who cares, you don't speak English. Uh, so I'm just going to do it because I want to. So I find it entertaining uh, to roll dice. I like it. I, I like being a creator of uh, moods in people and, and creating uh, events. So I'm going to roll dice for you. <laughs> okay, and you pick up these dice and you roll them. And uh, yeah, so and the skull and crossbone comes up. What's your reaction? too bad. Whoops. My bad. Is that it? Does that make it all okay? You said my bad. Um, nothing else. We, we shouldn't expect anything else from you. You're just going to say, eh, you know, hey, everybody else is doing it. <laughs> is that it? Everybody else is doing it. Oh, okay. That's the excuse. Yeah, that's a brilliant one. Yeah, that's right up there. Aristotle thought that was brilliant. He said, yeah, 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 that's a, that's a great logical argument. Everybody else is doing it. Uh, so what? What's your excuse? You just sentenced the person to horror, pain, suffering, misery? 
and uh, what are you going to do about it? Roll the dice some more? Well, maybe I can catch up. Oh, so you're a gambler. I get it. And so, yeah, you're just going to double down. So why not risk two or three more people to try to see if you can fix the mess you made? So yeah, let's build some more nuclear power plants and see if we can fix the one that's broken by building some more and doing it right instead. Getting lucky. Yeah. So let's undo our bad luck uh, by risking some more bad luck to get some good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's going to fix your victims. No, that's not. But that's the perception, right? The perception basically is that the happy people at the fun park um, can justify the suffering. Their compensation for it. Their little smiley faces is all you need. And then everything's all right. These poor ducks are way behind. Holy shit, did they have some attrition. <laughs> oh man. So they started off with nine, and now they're down to three. Yeah, so six are dead in some kind of probably not pleasant manner, and it's okay, because we still got three left. So screw the suffering, the misery, the heartache, the loneliness of the choking death of the six, because yeah, there's three left. And that's the logic that you're defending. And it's not logical. It's not uh, defensible as something reasonably ethical, as something uh, that balances as an equation. Your equations don't balance. They're unbalanced. And they're perverted. And it's all perverted by your uh, ego, your vanity, your fear, uh, your attachment, uh, your Borgish um, ownership. <laughs> you are owned by the team colors. You can't grow out of it. Uh, at least you can't seem to grow out of it uh, with just plain logical argument. You're only going to grow out of it, it seems, uh, you know, when the piano falls on awful close to you. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, you might hear the noise. You might recognize the threat. <sighs> Sad, but true. But I'm going to assume you do have a little character. You do have some wish to honor the truth, uh, to recognize the truth when it's been uh, revealed, pointed out, shown to you, when you've been taken over to it and somebody said, here, look at it. This is what's really going on. So I'm going to assume you can do that. That you can, uh, through understanding alone, recognize something's wrong and change to accommodate that wrongness. Just like I became a vegetarian simply because I recognized there's something fundamentally wrong in my behavior and what I was endorsing and uh, it needed to be changed. Alright, All right, now we're done. The camera's still... <laughs> yeah, we didn't get clogged by water. Uh, anyway, and... Uh, fix my pants. So, till next time. Oh. And such. I want to go home already. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah, we're done. And such. <laughs>